Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Los Panos Talk. My name is Justin Collins. On tonight's episode, I'm interviewing Joe Heim, who's the director of the Parks and Rec Division here in our city of Los Panos, and he's going to talk to us about some upcoming events and in general things going on in Parks and Rec, and we'll get into all of that in just a moment, right after a brief message from our sponsor. Thanks for watching. So once again, I'm here with Joe Heim, the director of Parks and Rec for our city. And uh, without further ado, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Joe Heim. I'm, a, I'm the uh, Parks and Rec manager for the city of Los Banos here um, at the community center, which is where my office is. Um, I'd like to thank Justin for inviting me on to, to try and spread the word um, about our upcoming events, activities. Um, I wanted to take a minute to say that the community center is open. Uh, we, we are registering for activities. We have um, our, our annual youth basketball league registering right now. We just wrapped up volleyball registration um, and we're in the process of youth soccer. Um, so we have all of our youth programs back and, and, and in gear. Um, we have rentals available, all that sort of um, stuff that we had two years ago that I'm really thankful to get back. Um, so if uh, you're interested in any programs, of course, we have all the information available on lostbanos.org, but you can also stop by. Um, we're always happy to, to um, uh, talk about our programs or pick up flyers, all that sort of stuff. So um, just let us know here at the community center. Great. And so what about like the classes and stuff? I know there's some classes at the community center. Are those happening again now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have actually some new classes this year. Um, we brought back classes like Aikido and uh, indoor soccer um, here at the community center. Um, we have classes like 4-H um, after school that we brought back as well. And we have some new classes. So we're registering right now for Youth Evolution Basketball, which is a new class, uh, um, skills class for basketball, which would be perfect leading into the, the winter league here. Um, we also have a really popular dance fitness class um, here hosted at the uh, community center in the fitness room um, that's been really popular with young kids so um, we have quite a few classes uh, if you want, um, again want to check those out online or stop by um, we also send out a, a monthly newsletter to the schools um, for the kids to have if if i want my kids to do one of the rec programs or if i want to do a class what's the easiest way to sign up and get information about it yeah, I think the easiest way is to register online. If you go to lospanos.org and go to the Parks and Rec page, there'll be a bottom tab that says uh, it's register here, sign up here, and um, you'll make an account with um, uh, with us and you'll be able to see a listing of programs and you'll be able to select the program that you'd like. Um, you can also do that in person here at the community center. And when you register with us, um, if you include an email address, um, we can uh, send you out a monthly email as well that'll include our monthly newsletter letter um, and then monthly newsletter includes a listing of all of our programs that are registering um, programs that are coming up events that are coming up all that sort of stuff so um, really cool way to get information great and so uh, I saw a flyer going around there's like an upcoming event later in October kind of like a Halloween thing um, could you tell us more about that event yeah, absolutely. So what we're doing is we are doing the fall party in the park, which we did two years ago. Um, we did it at Ranchwood Park for the first time. And now that um, we're able to open back up. We are returning to that. And it's one of my favorite events. 
Um, so again, it's the fall party in the park and we're going to do it at Ag Sports Complex. Um, that's the north side um, park there on 165. And it's going to be from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and at 1.30 p.m. we'll be starting a ceremony for ribbon cutting for our dog park. Um, we recently opened a dog park out there, um, the Los Banos' first dog park. So really exciting project for us to get done. Um, it was a little bit of a process to get that in. I know I had people ask in about that since I started. Um, I found information on people wanting a dog park going back to the 2000s. It was a really exciting project to get done. I know I take my dog out there and enjoy it, um, but we never got a chance to celebrate the dog park because we opened in April. And at the time it was difficult to encourage large groups and large celebrations. So um, this will be an opportunity for us to bring some council members out and really celebrate um, the dog park construction while also having some fun for Halloween. So um, like I said, the events from one to six. So we'll have um, activities like um, uh, games out there. We have inflatables. We're going to be putting up a spooky uh, a maze that we're making out of some chicken wire and uh, some, some tea steaks. So that'll be really fun. We also have, I think everybody's favorite um, part of it is uh, pumpkin painting. So um, while supplies last, we have uh, pumpkins available for um, kids to come paint their designs. And that was really cool to see a couple years ago. You, we'd see this line of, of pumpkins drying that I had a million different designs and the kids got really into it. Um, and of course, just other activities like vendors. We'll have a lot of vendors out there um, promoting their business and, and offering giveaways. Um, we'll have some information on animal licenses, of course, related to the dog park. Um, and of course, you know, you have the large playground out there, horseshoe pits, a um, lot, of, lot of space. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to have it. I'm really excited to have it um, at Ag Sports Complex. That's a, a location that is um, pretty large in size. Um, and we've been trying to get um, around to different parks and different locations. We, we did a movie night um, in August at College Greens. We'll be doing um, an egg hunt over at Oliveira Park. We'll be doing Arbor Day over at Crest Hills Park. So we're, we're trying to get to different areas. Um, we just did our Sleep to Seniors here at the Community Center. We'll have our Breakfast of Santa at the beginning of December on the, the 4th of December um, here at the community center. So um, trying to get events in different areas. Um, Ag Sports Complex is a, a park that we're also trying to improve. Um, we were designing to replace the, the restroom out there um, and, and put in something that, that we can have open and, and um, have it benefit dog park users as well as um, for the field users, the players and, and general park users. So um, something that's, I, you know, really a great time to celebrate um, the, the changes that are happening at the park as well. Great. And so I have a couple questions about the event. Um, is the event a free event to attend? And my other question is, is if you uh, are a business and you want to have a booth or you want to be a vendor, how do you go about uh, doing that? Yeah, for sure. So the event is uh, is free to attend. Um, we'll have some food and and some vendors will be selling um, products out there. So those those items, of course, um, would cost money. Um, we have uh, several food vendors coming out um, as well. Um, uh, everything else, though, is free in terms of uh, using the games and, and uh, pumpkins as long as uh, supplies last for us. Um, and in terms of if you're interested in, in being a vendor with us, um, we're actually um, allowing vendors to come out at a no cost. Um, you just need to contact us. Um, you can contact me directly. Um, again, my name is Joe Heim. Otherwise, you can email parksandrecreation at lospanos.org. Um, and if you could send us um, your information, what you're trying to promote, uh, uh, of course, if you are trying to sell something, if you could include a business license, things like that. Um, and um, I'm, I'm happy. We, I'm trying to get people out to the event, and I'm trying to make it as uh, um, as enjoyable as it as it can be. So, um, you know, we have quite a few, and we have thankfully a lot of space out there. So, um, really looking forward to it. Great. And so, um, do you need actors, volunteers for the uh, haunted maze? Or is it not that kind of haunted maze? And um, how, uh, I guess we could say, how scary is the maze? Is it appropriate for younger children, uh, teenagers? Can you give us some information on that? 
Yeah, regarding volunteers, we definitely need volunteers for the event. So um, if you know anybody or you yourself would be interested in doing that, please, again, reach out to Parks and Recreation at LosBanos.org. We need help with um, running the games. Um, we'll have people at the maze helping. We'll also have people helping with the pumpkins, uh, you know, um, adding more paint, cleaning uh, brushes, things like that. Um, and so we'll have uh, we'll definitely need volunteers. So if you're interested, um, please reach out to us. We're also here at the community center. Um, in terms of the maze itself, um, definitely geared towards little kids. Uh, we're not trying to make it too scary. Um, it's really um, some chicken wire that we're going to put up with um, some fabric. And then we have little wood cutouts of Frankenstein and vampire, uh, Dracula and, and pumpkins and things like that. And as they um, make their way through the maze, they'll be able to enjoy those Halloween um, treats. And then at the end of the maze, they'll be, um, we'll hand out uh, paper mazes and some crayons. And of course they can enjoy that as well. And we'll have some crafts and things like that for the kids to enjoy as well. Great. So it's definitely a kid friendly event and you don't have to worry about your kid being like too scared yeah. of the maze kind of thing. Okay. Oh, hopefully not, hopefully not. <laughs> Awesome. Um, and then um, before we go, I've seen a lot of people have asked about, um, you know, that we need more trees, et cetera, within the community around the city, et cetera. I know you guys have been doing a lot of work towards that end. Could you kind of give us like a little update or progress report how that's going? Yeah, um, uh, so we have uh, over 12,000 trees in town that we've discovered through a tree inventory that we completed last spring. Um, that's part of um, an urban forest management uh, a project that we are putting together. That's a, a plan, a planning document that we are putting together. Um, we were able to get a grant through um, the state uh, of California Cal Fire, um, which was, has been an awesome grant and um, awesome to work with our consultant that that has been working with us um, since, oh gosh, April or so, March, April, um, uh, maybe even sooner than that. Um, and um, yeah, so, so that's going to help us plan for the next 50 years. It's going to make us more eligible for future grants, such as future um, grants that might be large tree planting, um, things like that. Um, in the meantime, the grant did come with um, uh, uh, 100 trees that we were able to plant at five park locations. Uh, we used some volunteers back in uh, April, May um, to plant those trees. Um, we planted those at parks around town, uh, vineyards, meadowlands, um, here on the rail trail, um, Crest Hills Park, and uh, uh, Regency uh, Park. Um, and so, yeah, we have that project um, related to that plan, but we also have several other tree planting projects. Um, uh, for example, we have tree planting on the canal trail that we are working on, um, and that will be to help replace some of the gaps that have um, happened over time over on the, tra on the trail. We have some irrigation um, additions to add up there on the trail as well. Um, the section from um, Pioneer to uh, Central has less uh, valves than, than the, the newer section there along um, uh, center to I Street. And then the last uh, uh, major big uh, tree project we have, and we do have several other um, tree projects going on in town, but the last uh, other big, big project we have is um, we are planning currently um, the replacement of trees on the north side of I Street um, downtown from uh, 5th Street to 7th Street. So um, we selected the north side of I Street because of its project readiness. Um, there's already an electrical and um, irrigation trench um, along there that was put in, uh, I think, in the late 2000s. Um, the plan is to continue that um, to the south side. Uh, we want to um, install a trench with electrical and, and, and irrigation so that those trees can get the water that they need and um, the electrical can be for Christmas lights and things along those lines. Um, so the plan is definitely to have both sides of I Street there. Um, but uh, in terms of what's happening um, in the near future, uh, we are targeting that project to be um, this this fall. I'm, I'm hoping I'm really targeting November um, to complete that. So our city staff will be doing some work. We'll have a contractor involved as well. So I'm really excited for that because um, we know um, downtown's been really trying to make uh, improvements down there. And um, it's, it's it has a lot of potential to, to um, be a, a, a place that we, uh, the community wants to visit and wants to enjoy. And I think 
Um, one thing I learned in the parks is, and just walking my dog around town is, um, trees help things be usable. Uh, the, the shade that they provide, the beauty that they provide makes you want to, to be there, whether it be walking down a neighborhood or whether you're enjoying picking in a park. So um, I think it makes a big difference and I'm um, looking forward to that, those projects. No, I definitely agree. And there, there's a lot of evidence on how trees even reduce crime. And they even talk about how trees uh, actually d help with the ur urban island effect and, and cooling and making the average temperature down. And there's all kinds of great benefits. Uh, out of curiosity, do you know what species of tree has been chosen for the downtown area? Yeah, so we are pursuing um, Chinese pistache trees downtown on the, on the north side of I Street there. Um, this was based on a recommendation from the Downtown Association, as well as working with our city staff here. Um, Chinese pistache are trees that are pretty common in town. Um, we, for example, we have some in the community center parking lot here. Um, there's already a few downtown, I want to say, maybe in front of the police station on the corner of 5th and J. Um, and they are medium-sized trees. Um, they, they do... Uh, um, have good roots. They, they don't typically have root issues. Um, again, that's uh, why you see them in the parking lot here and other um, parking lot islands um, and, and right of ways throughout town. Um, again, they are a medium sized tree. Um, they, they've done really well here so far. Um, they're one of our most popular trees. Great. And so um, before I conclude this interview, is there anything else you'd like to let the audience know? No, I just really, I really appreciate you reaching out and, and wanting to promote this um, activity and these, all these activities, including the fall party in the park. Um, and I'm really grateful to be back. Uh, I, it's, it was a long year for Parks and Rec, as it was, I'm sure, for everybody. And um, it's been a relief to, to get through the summer and get into the fall and, and, and really get back to growing the, the recreation programs in town. Um, I think it's, it's so needed here, um, particularly. So um, I'm obviously a big advocate for Parks and Rec, but I'm really, really happy that, that we've been able to return and the support that we've gotten from um, city staff, council and, and the community. So I'm um, just really grateful for that. Great. And I also want to say, uh, Joe, thank you. You're doing a great job. Um, a lot of us in the community are really glad that you came on board and, and took over. And since you have, a lot of changes have been made and things moving. And we're really appreciative of that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Justin. All right. If you want to stay informed with things going on in the community and what's going on in the city of Los Panos, well, you definitely need to follow Los Panos Talk. And you don't have to be reliant on the algorithm of Facebook or the Instagram newsfeed anymore. You can subscribe to LosPanosTalk.com directly and get all the videos and articles straight to your email and never miss a moment. Once again, my name is Justin Collins, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.